Today, I will talk about uh, genuinely multipartite correlations in system invariant by particle permutation. I'm a professor at the physics department of the Federal University of Santa Catarina, and I'm, member of, I'm a member of the group of quantum information from SOF, uh, Jigsaw. And before I start my, my talk, I I'd like to take, uh, say that I was PhD student here in the Federal University of San Carlos from 2003 to 2007. And uh, Celso Villas Boas is my, is, is my colleague during my PhD and also a uh, present collaborator. So thank you for the invitation, Celso, again. This work uh, was, okay, these two works today are you present, were made in collaboration uh, with Susanne Caligari. She was my, my PhD student, now she's in Poland, uh, together with Antonio Crispin Lorenzo, that is my PhD student, and Professor Gabriel Land from uh, Physics Institute of OSP, and uh, Thiago Marcial, my postdoc nowadays, and the professor Thiago de Barba from uh, Federal University of Technology from Paraná. Okay, the, the summary of my presentation is, first I will introduce uh, the notion of quantum correlations, then I will introduce uh, the measure of genuine multipartite correlations that I use today. And then I will apply this measure in two models, the Dick model of superradiance and lipkin meshkov lip model. And then I will present my conclusions and perspectives. Okay, before you start to talk about quantum correlations, it's important to define what is a correlation. Then we will I, I will talk first uh, about classical correlations in, in our classical world. For, uh, for instance, in economy, we may be uh, interested in correlation between price and demand. That is very important, for, for example, for government or businessmen. And uh, in biology, if you are interested in genetic correlations, that will define the individual traits, for instance, and another simple example is in social science that uh, we try to find the relationship between income distribution and crime rate, for instance. So these are example of classical correlations in our world. But now the question is, uh, what are the quantum correlations and in which sense they are different from the classical correlations, for instance? Well, the emergence of quantum correlations started in 1935 with the famous paper by Einstein, Podolsky, and Rosen that they used in a game experiment. They considered to separate the particles A and B, and these two particles interact in the first moment, and they were separated, and they were uh, described by a perfectly correlated state between position and momentum of the particles. So uh, the question is, this kind of correlation that correlate this game like experiment uh, is the entanglement. Entanglement was first defined by Schrodinger in, in, in the same year. And when you deal with uh, entanglement for bipartite pure state, it's easy to say, First, what is a separable state? Well, a separable state, sure, okay, separable state is a product state. Psi, suppose that we have two systems, A and B, and the state that describes part A is Psi A, a tensor product with the state that describes the system B, Psi B. So this is a separable state, as you know, I'm, I'm not sure if all, uh, all of our listening to this presentation already know this stuff of quantum information, but it's quite similar to a uh, probability, a uh, joint probability, for, for instance. Suppose that PAB is a joint probability, 
And if this joint probability is written as uh, pro uh, probability A times probability B, this means that this system A and B are not correlated. This is quite similar to the case of, this is the case of separable state, for instance. And although it, there are also classical correlations, but this is an analogy to the case of entanglement, just that. So uh, if you define what is a, a separable pure state, all states that cannot be described as these states can be defined as entanglement states, okay? Okay, I'm uh, talking about entanglement because as I mentioned before, entanglement was the first correlation that emerged in quantum mechanics. Uh, even uh, already in the beginning of quantum mechanics in 1935, okay? But there are a lot of correlations beyond entanglement. For instance, in 1964, uh, Bell, John, John Bell uh, decided to create a way of solve the problem proposed by Einstein, Podolsky, Rosen, and the mathematical formulation established that it's possible to create uh, in, uh, inequalities that are capable of decide if a state is uh, Bell correlate or, or not. I, I mean, if you have an entangled pure state, this state uh, violates the Bell inequality. But in 1989, Werner showed that there are entangled mixed states. The difference now is that there are entangled mixed states that do not violate the Bell's inequality. So this was a surprise because uh, there are states in quantum mechanics that are entangled pure states that can be described by a local hidden variables model. So what you are doing now is to split the entanglement or the entanglement between local entangled states and non-local entangled states. I, what I mean is uh, entangled, there are two kinds of entanglement, local and non-local states. Okay, non-local entangled states are Bell correlated states. Okay, what I'm, I'm, I'm trying to say that the, there are different ways of quantum systems are correlate between them, okay? This is a simple example uh, about quant, quant correlations. But now there is a lot of different measures of quantum correlation, mainly after uh, the years 2000. There are uh, several measures, coherency, quantum deficit, quantum steering, classical correlations, quantum discord, etc. And uh, the kind of correlation I will talk today is the total correlation. The total correlation here, I mean, I'm, I'm not splitting quantum and classical correlations. I'm using the total, okay, these two kinds of correlations. But instead, I'm worried about the genuine multipartite correlations, okay? So, uh, I will start to talk now about genuine multipartite correlations. I, I believe that the best way of exemplifying this kind of correlation is taking, for instance, a simple system composed by two particles. Suppose that these two particles are distinguishable, so they are colored with different colors. And suppose now that uh, these particles are identical. They have the same color, okay? Now we are show is that when you deal with distinguishable systems, we need to do a lot of more calculations than, we, than when we deal with indistinguishable subsystems. However, uh, in, uh, indistinguishability here is not related to the overlap of wave function as when we deal with bosons and fermions, okay? Just they are far enough, the systems, okay? There is no 
overlap of the wavelength functions. But if you change the position between one of these two particles, the system remains the same. Okay, that's the idea of indistinguishability here. Okay, if you are interested in to measure the genuine multipartite correlation of order two. Okay, first of all, it's necessary to state what is a genuine multipartite correlation. The word genuine means that uh, I'm interested in correlations with that defined order. Genuine multipartite correlations of order two, this means that I'm interested in to take correlations between two particles in the system. If the system is distinguishable, uh, so there are these three possibles of analyzing the correlations, okay? But if the particles in the system are indistinguishable, there is only one way that is equivalent to these three other ways, okay? But now, if I'm interested in to analyze the genuine multipartite correlation of order three, as here, and there are these four different ways, okay? And each measure of the genuine multipartite correlations in this case may be different between them, okay? Because we are considering different subsystems. But if the system are uh, similar, I mean, in, uh, indistinguishable, so all these configurations are equivalent to just one, okay? Because I can try to change one particle uh, outside to the inside of this cycle, okay? And the system remains the same. And finally, it's possible to, far, uh, to, it's possible to find genuine multipartite correlations of order four in a system composed by four particles, okay? So that, that is the kind of uh, correlation uh, I'm interested in. I'm not splitting between classical and quant correlation, but the total correlation, but with a well-defined genuine multipartite order, okay? So the first, uh, first question here is how to quantify the genuine k partite correlation? Okay, k is used here to define the order of the correlation, okay? So suppose that we have a system of n particles. And when you say genuine, uh, when, when you split the system in different portions here, okay, with just one particle in each portion, we are defining the space of states P1. However, it's possible to put uh, two particles in each portion. There are different ways. It's necessary to take the to take into account uh, all possible splits that have at most two particles in one portion, okay? This is the P2 states. And if you continue with this, if you continue this reasoning, okay, PK is a, a space of states, I mean, that uh, have at most K particles in one partition. Okay, that's here. But notes that PK uh, also take into account all the other partitions with K smaller, okay? So following this reason, PN, uh, PN englobes all the other partitions. Okay, that's the idea. So we are splitting the system in this way because we are interested in to uh, to quantify the correlation of order k, okay? Okay, now we are defined how to write the states that we represent before. Observe that here, these dashed lines are used to split the system, to split the partitions, okay? So, uh, the state here is a state that uh, involves two particles. The state here involves two particles, and these states and these states are related to a tensor product. Okay, in, 
following the same way, uh, this is a state with k particles that is related to the other states of the remaining particles in the, in the system uh, through a product state. That's why we represent sigma n, the state, uh, in, the, in the set pk as a tensor product of the states of the particles in each partition. Okay, then uh, the next question is how to quantify the genuine multipartite correlations. Before we quantify the genuine multipartite correlations, we define the correlations of order higher than k. And we use a measure of distance to do that. Okay, d is the measure, okay? k is the number of the greatest partition, and n is the number of particles in the system. Rho n here is the state of the n particles. So we are interested here in to calculate the correlations of order higher than k. And this is done by a measure, a measure of distance between rho n and the state in that partition here. But we will try, we will look for the smallest distance between uh, between these two states, okay? These are the properties of uh, this measure, okay? This positive, it's equal to zero if on, only if rho is equals to sigma, and this contractive under a complete positive tracing preserve map, okay? This is, these are uh, good properties for a measure of distance. But the measure you use to calculate the distance here is the quantum relative entropy. Okay, the quantum relative entropy is defined in this way, whereas as of whole is the von Neumann entropy. The von Neumann entropy is the trace of whole log whole. I, I don't know if uh, most of you are uh, used to deal with this kind of calculation, but you can ask me if you have questions, okay? So the idea of quantum relative entropy is basically a measure of distance, minus in the sense of distribution. We are comparing both distributions for the density matrix whole and the density matrix sigma, okay? If these two uh, density matrices are equal, observe that the, the quantum relative entropy is new, okay, as it would be. And the reason to use, the, the, the reason for using the von Neumann entropy, because it's easy to calculate it. Okay, now we already defined the measure of distance. We already defined the correlations of order higher than k. 10k, okay? And, but, but now it's necessary to do this minimization procedure here between the distance uh, of rho n and sigma n. But here we are using a result from this reference by Kava Modi, uh, where they show that the closest state to sigma to rho n can be written in this way. Okay, this function is the floor function. Okay, probably you already know. And uh, a simple example here is, suppose that you have a system of 10 particles and you are interested in partitions with the maximum size three. Okay, then the division of 10 by three is three dot three, 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 et cetera. So the floor function is that this number is three. So uh, the state sigma n is the tensor product of rho three, three times uh, with the tensor product of rho one. That's the state due to this part of the calculation. So 
we already know how to find the closest the closest state to Rolling. So this is the expression that you need to calculate the quantum uh, the correlations of order higher than k. Okay, to do this these calculations, we need just uh, to know the reduced density matrix of the system, the and the calculations of uh, von Neumann entropy, just that. With this, we are able to calculate the correlations of order higher than k. But observe that you are not interested in the correlations of order higher than k, but the genuine multipartite correlations of order k. Okay, to achieve that goal, we'll define the measure of genuine multipartite correlation of order k as the difference between the correlations of order higher than k minus 1 minus the correlations of order higher than k. That if you use the relative entropy, the quantum relative entropy, you'll find this expression. And now you use a simple way to visualize the meaning of it. Okay. Then here is the total space that includes uh, all possible partitions in which rho n is inside here. And suppose that you are taking in the middle a uh, subspace, which has at most uh, k subsystems in one partition, and here a subsystem, uh, a space that has at most k minus one subsystems in one partition. So the correlation of order higher than k min minus one will occupy all this space. If you apply the same idea to find the correlations of order higher than k, uh, we'll find a state that lives here, a state that lives here and, oh, sorry. Then as we are performing the subtraction between these two measures, we'll find just a uh, state here that has at most k subsystems. So say, okay, I, I mean, this is a state with genuine multipartite correlations of order k, right? And k here can be 2, 3, 4, until n, that's the number of the particles in the system. So we already have our measure of genuine multipartite correlation. Now I will perform some applications of this measure. Okay, this is the interpretation, a simple interpretation of it. It's that the total correlations present in the system is just the sum of genuine multipartite correlations of all orders. Okay, this is a nice interpretation of this measure of correlation. And the first application is in the Dick model of super radians. Okay, in order to understand what is the super radiance, first we will uh, compare it with a system that is not super radiant, okay? Suppose that we have a collection of atoms, you can think they are two level systems and they are separate far enough that one atom does not uh, interact with the other atoms in the sample, in, in, the, in the sample. So uh, each atom will decay independently and the power of the radiation emitted in the system will depend uh, just on the number of particles in the system, okay? So as in general, the decay of each atom is exponentially decreasing, we will find this kind of curve. But if you, if the atoms are close enough, they will start to interact between them. Uh, and in this case, we are considering in this our in this our simplified model, the atoms do uh, do not interact directly among all the atoms in the system, but they interact indirectly through the photons they emit. Suppose that one atom 
emits one photon and this photon with uh, its wavelength that is uh, big enough to cover all the sample I'll say, okay, this photon will correlate the first atom with the other atoms in the sample. And so, so that the emission time of the second atom will be different from the first one because they are now interacting, okay? After some, some time, uh, these atoms will emit, uh, emit the energy per time, the power, uh, so, so that they, uh, they are much more intense, okay, like a peak here, okay, in a time interval that's very short. This time interval of emission of radiation is inversely proportional to the number of particles in the system, okay. So this is one signature of the super radiance, okay. This is a signature related to the evolution time of the system. So the idea here is to study the correlations present in this system. Uh, to do that, we use a master equation to describe the system. This is the unitary part of the evolution, while this part is related to the non-unitary evolution, to the dumping. Uh, these operators, the capital J, is a, a pseudo-spin operator, collective operator, that is the sum of the individual operators of each atom. Each atom here is a two-level system, okay? So the solution of that master equation is a density matrix with this form, okay? Where PJM is the, the population of each stage, or uh, notes that this is a density matrix, this density matrix diagonal in this basis, and this is this basis it is the Dick basis states. Okay, uh, each Dick state here is of this form. Okay, suppose that at the beginning of the evolution, all atoms are in the excited state. Okay, as here. E is the excited state and G is the ground state. After some time, the first atom emits a photon and then two atoms emit a photon and so on. So, so that each jig state is an entangled state. Okay? Observe that the state, uh, the jig state for four atoms and one atom, uh, uh, one atom emitted a photon here we will find an entangled state that is a, an equal superposition of all these states, okay? So these are the Dick states that uh, we'll be used to analyze the correlations uh, between the system and this state that is the state of the total system. One important characteristic of this state that describes the super radiant phenomenon is that although each jig state is entangled, as I showed before, the global state that describes the system, that is a convex combination of jig states, is an unentangled state, the separable state. This result uh, was proven uh, some, some years ago by Ealin Wolf, Yu, and Tura. Okay, and this is an important result because in general, people that uh, imagine that as a super radiant is a, a quantum phenomenon that occurs due to the correlations, probably this correlation is entanglement. But what these authors show that this state is not entangled, although each jig state is an entangled one, okay? So what I will do now is to show our results of genuine multipartite correlations in the super radiance case. Uh, first, you show the correlations of order higher than k. In this case, we are considering just five particles and k equals one, two, three, four, and five. Okay, this is 
picture of the state of the of the partition and state of the system for k equal one, two, three, four, and five. Okay, and this is the the behavior we observe that all the correlations greater than one, two, three, four, and five, they achieve uh, the the maximum value in the same time. Okay. This is the time of maximum correlations. And with these results, we are able to calculate the genuine multipartite of order K. Okay, this is the same picture, the previous slides. And now, this is the genuine multipartite correlations of order K. Uh, remember that to get each curve here, it's necessary to remember that this curve here comes from uh, subtraction between these two ones, okay? As I show here. Well, what's the novelty here? The, the novelty here is that the genuine multipartite correlation of order two is the greatest one, followed by the genuine multipartite correlation of order five. Observe that the genuine multipartite correlation of order three and four are smaller than the genuine multipartite correlation of order five. This is not. This is a result that is not. Uh, this is counterintuitive. Okay. This is uh, unexpected. This means that okay, five particles in a super radiant system are strongly connected than uh, partitions of three and four particles. Okay. Another characteristic that we observe here, that is the time in which the correlations achieve their maximum value is different from the time that the emitted power is maximum. TC is the time in which the correlations are maximum, okay, here. And this other dashed line here is the time in which the power achieves its maximum value. So they are different. We uh, start at the beginning of our research that the, the, that the time in which the power is maximum, the system is mostly correlated, but this is not true, okay? This will be true just when we consider a great number of particles in the system. These, these pictures show this, okay? Here is the time. Uh, yellow ball here is used to the time in which the emitted power is maximum while the blue cycle here is the time in which the correlations are maximum okay and we observe that as the number of particles in the system increase these two values agree between them okay but it's not so uh, strange because if you imagine that the peak in which the emitted power is uh, all the physics is inside that peak of emission of radiation. So, and the, this, this peak, okay, the, the time interval in which this peak occurs is defined by inverse the number of particles in the system. So if the number of particles in the system increase a lot, the peak is a very narrow curve, okay? So that's is why use and okay and a last uh, result in in the system is that we show here is that the genuine multipartite correlations of order uh, k that are shown here in this picture uh, is that when you analyze the correlations present in this in the dick state with just one excitation in a system of 1,000 particles, okay? We are considering here a system with 1,000 particles, and we are considering the dick state with just one excitation, okay? The correlations of order higher than K, K is in the X axis here, okay? Follow this yellow dotted line here. Okay? And uh, the, the dick state with uh, five with uh, 500 excitations or half 
of the particles of the system are excited, okay, we obtain this uh, red dot line here. And if you compare with the correlations of order higher than k, for the total state, the super radiant state, we observe that the Dick state with half of the excitations, uh, the correlations are very similar. Okay, very, very similar. So we can say that, okay, all the correlations present in the system are due to the Dick state with half of the correlations. Okay, but okay, this is not true. Uh, excuse me, Eduardo, a question. Uh, are you here studying uh, the dynamics or only the state? Uh, uh, yeah, I'm asking because before I was on the dynamics and now you have such a huge number of atoms that you could not uh, simulate it uh, quantum mechanically. Ah, that's right. Okay. Here you are analyzing the dynamics as before. However, you are taking a particular value. Okay. You are analyzing the density matrix of the system with 1,000 particles in which the correlations in the system achieve its maximum value, as here. We are analyzing in this peak here, but for 1,000 particles, okay? To uh, look at the dynamics, you assume that the system is uh, goes only through the symmetric states, or...? Uh... Yeah, okay, okay. Uh, this, this density matrix is the solution of that master equation that I showed before here. Uh, okay. uh, here, okay, we solve this, this master equation. Okay, mm -hmm. this is a simple model, okay, this is a simplified model of Dick super radiance. It's important mm -hmm. to highlight that there are different types of Dick super, uh, of super radiance. Here we are considering this particular dynamics, okay, in which initially all atoms are in the excited state. This is very important. Okay. The cascade. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so your system will stay uh, in the what they call the symmetric states. Perfect. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Okay. okay. Thank you. This is, the solution of the system is a convex combination of symmetric states, as I showed here. Sure. Uh, here. here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. And, uh, okay. So, what I'm trying to show here is that, okay, the correlations of order higher than k uh, for the total state of the system in which it has the maximum value of correlations is quite similar to the correlations present in the Dick state in which we have half of the population in the excited state, okay? That's the idea here. But when you, when we analyze here the population of each Dick state, each element of the base is used to represent the density matrix, okay? And when you analyze this population in the time in which the correlations are maximum, okay? and we plot this against the number of excitations, we observe that the most populated state during the time in which the system is more correlated is not half the population, as I show here and as I show here. It's basically one third of the population, one third of the number of atoms in the systems, okay? This means that, okay, the state, the Dick state with half of the population in the excited state is the state with most part of the correlations of the system, but it isn't the dominant state during the maximum emission of radiation. Okay, so there is a there is a okay there is a I mean uh, this this is a result that is not quite uh, intuitive. Okay, so these results are results about uh, quantum, uh, about genuine multiple correlations in the Dick model, the simplified Dick model, okay? Now I move to the lipkin meshkov glick model. This is a model uh, that invariant by particle permutation uh, in the system here. 
And uh, in this model, observe that there are two level system with spins, okay? One half spins, and each spins interact with each other run uh, through the same interaction strength here, the same value. And there is an external field. You can think about the external magnetic field controlled by this parameter H. Gamma is the asymmetry between the XX coupling and YY coupling here, and the interaction is mediated by this parameter lambda. Okay, you can write this Hamiltonian by using the pseudo-spin representation that I showed before, the collective operators, capital J, okay, in this way. And when we analyze the ground state uh, of this Hamiltonian, we find, we, first we find the ground state of this Hamiltonian, and then we calculate the genuine multiple correlations uh, for this ground state, okay? In, in this picture here, I show the genuine multiple correlations of order k equals two. We observe that for the parameter that control the intensity of the external magnetic field, if it is a small value, okay, the system is uh, quite correlated, but According, I increase the value of age, the system will become uh, less, uh, less correlated so that after age equals one, there is no correlation, okay? This is, in this case, particular in the Lipkin mesh called Lipkin model, we have a second order quantum phase transitions so that in this phase, the state of the system is separable. There is no correlation. That's why our measure of genuine multiple type correlation is no, okay? But we also observe that according to increase the value of the correlation, the partition, eh? k equal 3, k equal 4, and k equal 13, we observe that the value of the genuine multiple type correlation is become smaller. And for that, during the phase transition, this is the behavior of the correlations. Okay, and so if we analyze in the thermodynamic limit in which the number of particles is infinity, here I just consider any equal uh, 155 particles, okay, we find this behavior. Uh, here I show the correlations of order higher than k. Uh, these two pictures are used just to show the effect of uh, the size of the partition I am considering. If I consider partitions in which n mod k is zero, I mean the division uh, of n by k results in integer number, so uh, the behavior of correlations of order higher than k is a curve, well behaved, but if we, we don't take this into account, we can, found, we, we can find uh, this strange behavior with a lot of uh, peaks, etc. Okay. And finally, we calculate the critical exponents of the Lipkin Meshkov Glick model. We consider here the total correlations in which k equal one uh, against the number of particles in the system. And here we consider the genuine multipartite correlations of order two, three, and n. We find that the critical exponents of the systems uh, of the system are given by these values. We observe that the first value is approximately dot five, and the last one is approximately minus dot five. And we believe that all the critical exponents are in this range, but we we are not sure, it's necessary to prove that, okay? And we observe that for different order of correlations, we have different critical exponents, okay? And finally, I will present the conclusions. Well, uh, as we, we expect that the atoms in the Dick super radiance, they become much more correlate uh, near the time of maximum emission of radiation. Okay, we expect that, but we calculated now and we proved that.
uh, the most correlated state, that state in which half of the population is in the excited state, uh, is not the most populated during the maximum, the maximum emission of radiation. Okay. I, I am saying that because in general, people used to think that during the maximum emission of radiation, the jig state in, the, in which half of the population is in the excited state is the state which dominates all the dynamics of the system. We show that this is not the most populated one. So this is a result that is not intuitive. Okay. And we also show that uh, all orders of the genuine multipartite correlations, they signal the second order quantum phase transition in the Lipkin mesh called Lick model. And finally, as I mentioned, we conjecture that the critical exponent of the second order quantum phase transition in the Lipkin mesh called Lick model are in the interval minus one half to plus one half. Okay, uh, we are continuing the research in this line, but we are studying the correlate the, uh, the connection between the genuine multipartite correlations and tiny crystals. We are uh, trying to understand if the genuine multipartite correlations are able to describe the different phases of tiny crystal systems. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Eduardo, for the very nice uh, presentation. So the time is open for questions. Uh, sir, is this uh, study uh, done uh, theoretically or uh, experimentally? Ah, this is a th uh, theoretical study. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Eduardo, uh, some questions. You derived an expression for the correlations, multipartite correlations. Uh, but if I understood correctly, it is valid for pure states or is in general? I mean, for even for mixed states. Okay, this derivation, this expression, you use it for mixed state too. Uh, also for mixed state. Okay, yeah. good. And another question is. You showed some results for um, many particle system, uh, 200 particles in the spin model, right? Right. And the question is, uh, how did you solve this system? Because 200 particles in a quantum model, it's really hard to solve. How did you do that? I'm interested in the ah, okay. numerical part of the... Ah, okay, <laughs> the okay, okay. Understand. Yes, that's a very, very good question. When you are working in the symmetric subspace of the total Hilbert space, we are limited in the dimension of this. I mean, uh, re uh, remember that I use the pseudo spin representation and that the J, the total spin of the system is N, the number of the particles over two. If you have yeah. 1000 particles, we have a spin with 500 value okay so the number of projections is 2j plus one okay if mm -hmm. you are dealing with a matrix with dimension 1000 it's quite comfortable yes but in the the the, the latch model you solved you presented uh, you have the hamiltonian that in principle could could uh, could populate any stage i guess right not, ah, okay, I mean, that's the point. The... That's a good point. Uh, it it's all the system, all all the states that we are using can be written as a combination of big states. So we okay. are restricted in this symmetric subspace of the total Hilbert space that we are are that we are able to calculate that. Otherwise, it would be impossible. That the okay. That's the reason, the title of the talk, symmetric uh, system in, uh, invariant by particle permutation. That's the reason, because otherwise okay. our task would be impossible. You were right. Okay, okay, thank you. 
<clears throat> then my so, uh, oh, okay. Uh, you can maybe because it's uh, very connected. Then, in which system do you expect uh, this uh, uh, this uh, conditions uh, to be met? Uh, in the sense that, okay, uh, Arroche, for example, later showed that uh, uh, near field interactions would break the symmetry, and uh, you would have a strong uh, contribution of uh, unsymmetric uh, modes. So, for example, uh, atoms uh, which couple through flight and uh, which have this vectorial nature, usually you would expect to uh, to leave uh, these uh, symmetric substates. So, do you know if there are other systems uh, where you would expect uh, that uh, this approach is uh, valid? I don't know, but I guess it is uh, useful because if you are outside the subs the symmetric subspace, all this calculation break down. <laughs> That's the problem. Uh, yeah, but I agree. I agree that if you consider other interactions, direct interactions between the atoms, this property of the systems, uh, they they don't they, they don't remain, uh, and it's necessary a different approach. And you use probably the full Hilbert space that we will find the problem that cells mentioned. Mm -hmm. Thank you. André, yeah. you wanted to... Uh, that was exactly my question. <laughs> the rest of the Hilbert space. Yeah, but anyway, but, but this, this point, so at a certain point, you, you notice that unintuitive that, result mm -hmm. that you have stronger, somehow stronger correlations for five particles, for instance, in that calculation that you've done. So, okay, so this is something that I have no intuition for. So what, what physically, why, why does that model? Because that's probably not true for a realistic model where you take into account the full Hilbert space. So that must be something particularly that you found because you're, you're just considering the symmetric state uh, subspace. So why, why do you expect that thing to happen? Because that's very not counterintuitive. And actually this, I'm asking this, just because of numerical uh, problems, because typically when we are doing simulations for the realistic model that take, takes and try to take into account at least more than the symmetric subspace, we consider, for instance, we consider double uh, two body correlations and we neglect more than that. So if you're saying that you, you have a way to say, oh, three body correlations, five body correlations would be more important. It's a nice way to say that also a certain model will break down at this point. So I'm just curious if you have a physical intuition why that is happening. Okay, uh, okay, this is case. Intuition is very hard, I mean, because quantum mechanics, when you talk about quantum mechanics, the intuition uses this, it doesn't work, okay? But, uh, uh, but I, it's important to mention that our result were obtained because we are restricted in the sub in the in the subspace invariant by particle permutation okay that's right but the problem that five five particles in a okay in a system of in a super radiant system of five particles the fact that five particles are more correlated than for instance three or four this could be, we're not sure, but there is a possibility that our measure we are using, it maybe, okay, have some, some problem. We are, we are not sure, okay? There, are, there is a lot of measure of quantum correlations in literature, but we decide to use that because it's quite uh, easy, I mean, to use, that's why, but as we, Okay, otherwise it would be necessary to do an experiment and compare. I mean, that's the final, the final decision because uh -huh. other way it's not possible. The intuition doesn't work in general in quantum mechanics. Uh -huh. Yeah, and the fact, I think Homo mentioned this, the fact that you, you have an all-to-all -all interaction, right? It's not something that is local. So the, the particles that are closer together, it doesn't matter in your model, right? So mm -hmm. realistically, I think that will, will break a little uh, bit for... Maybe in an optical cavity, 
you can uh, with yes, uh, me, me, yeah. one light mode uh, yeah. and get this. Uh... Yeah, but that's really nice. It's really cool. Result. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Yes. No, Hello. It's very... Can Hello. I make a question? Please. Okay. Of course, my dear. <laughs> <laughs> First of all, so, so nice to see you, Eduardo and Celso, again. So nice to see you again. Hello. Very nice to see you also, you know. <laughs> OK, thank you. It's a great pleasure to see you here. OK, nice, thanks. Um, maybe it's a, it's a very silly question. I, I was just wondering whether you can put all those curves for different orders of correlations in the same curve I mean, if you can find some sort of universality for these curves, maybe multiplying by some factor which depends on k or something like this, because this would be interesting. Because then you can you can say, okay, all those kinds of correlations are in fact of the same of the same kind in a certain sense. Have you have you tried something like this to put all those curves? and transform all of them in the same curve? I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, OK, Hena, thank you for your question. At, at the very beginning of our research, we tried to do that. And Professor Lange uh, is a specialist in quantum, quantum thermodynamics. And he uh, indicates that. We, we tried to do that, but it, it, it wasn't possible in the case of super radiant system. But it's a very important question because we already tried to solve that at, at the moment. But OK, it's not possible. OK, thank you. OK, thank you. And just, I wonder if, uh, coming back to the case of an optical cavity, so if you have the atoms in an optical cavity and you, okay, you would have a stationary wave, uh, Depending on the positions of the particles, you could have different coupling to uh, the light mode. Whether they are all at the nodes or anti-nodes, or on the contrary, if they are at different positions. Then you would have a randomness on the coupling. Uh, do you have any intuition if the randomness uh, in the coupling could uh, help or rather destroy uh, this uh, any uh, multipartite uh, correlations? Well, I'm, I'm not sure if different couples will destroy this, these correlations. I'm not sure. But naturally, our description will, totally, will be totally different, OK? Uh, because the master equation that I use to describe our system will won't work anymore. But uh, I, I am not sure if uh, the correlations will be destroyed. I don't know exactly. Okay. It's actually yeah, already, okay, it's already a question whether you can have a simple model in this case, uh, where you can, uh, uh, like a kind of, uh, not symmetric state, but a modified symmetric state uh, where you can uh, study uh, 1,000 particles. Um, for me, it's not uh, completely clear that you could not get a simple model if you have a random couplings, for example. Ah, OK, OK, I understand, I understand. OK, it would be interesting to okay. find that, that solution. I'm not sure if you use, for, for example, a random coupling inside these two models, even the elliptic mesh cover model, we will keep inside the symmetric subspace. Um, I agree it will not be symmetric. You will have to modify your states. But maybe you still go through a limited part of the Hilbert space. Ah, maybe, maybe, you can still, maybe, uh, maybe it would be nice. Mm 